Okay, it's day two of Reading Festival and I'm here with Lesser Key. How are you feeling? Awesome. Fantastic. Is that the general mood in camp today? Fantastic. I, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Did you prepare especially for your day today? Did you have an early night last night? We thank God we actually finally got some sleep last night. Uh, the day before, we uh, we played last night and uh, we had zero sleep. Like we we're long plane ride, a lot of like stressful mix-up situations. And we finally got like six six to seven hours of sleep last night, and we feel like completely different people. So, yeah. so you're fully refreshed or still a bit? No, but I feel way better. I, I feel much better, you know. Yeah, even an hour asleep after being up for 24 hours will make you feel a lot better yeah <laughs> now, how's your day gone so far today have you been doing press all day or have you had a chance to go to all the stages and then taken the music we haven't done much uh, we haven't done much watching of other bands or anything we haven't had much of a chance to nothing crazy with press um, but yeah we have uh, we did like a Led radio, Zeppelin right? op thing uh, they're doing some re-releases -rele -re for Led Zeppelin and uh, there was a BBC One thing they did earlier and that's a big deal yeah it was fun yeah it was cool we're gonna go do a session with them on Tuesday nice. yeah okay so you released your first EP over here in April is that right Correct. over in what over here in, oh, a in April, April oh yeah yeah on the Fool's Day. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Now you, you work with Sylvia Massey, is that right? The yes. production. Now tell me how that experience is. That was really cool. It was up in uh, Weed, California. Uh, just like a really like surreal kind of area. The vibe was really cool. Uh, we stayed um, like the whole like the studio was like this like old like abandoned theater and we stayed like she has a bunch of houses out there. We stayed in one of the houses up there and just it was it was just an overall cool experience and she's really cool and stuff. So yeah. Uh yeah, we had, you're outside of L.A., so you can really kind of concentrate and focus, and uh, the house definitely had some vibes to it. Belonged to, like, Amelia Earhart's family, and kind of some weird, I don't know, just had some weird experiences there, and uh, it was good fun. When you say weird experiences, do you mean you personally had some weird things happen while you were there? I didn't. I don't know. I did, but um, close to your chest. Yeah, let's not creep out, everyone. You know, <laughs> I'm feeling creeped out. That's why we go to horror movies. Don't creep me out. Uh, no, it is cool. You know, what's even creepier outside of the house is just the town. Like everybody thinks that there's extraterrestrials coming out of the mountain. These uh, these uh, Lemarians. Yeah, yeah. We all want to believe, right? It's happening, don't you? <laughs> no, you're looking at me like a skeptic. No, I, I don't know. I don't know. None of us know. I know, right? So, do you think you work better when you're away from a city, or do you kind of miss having all that sort of influence when you're recording? Personally, I like working outside of the city because it's a distraction. The quieter, the better for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, as far as like, writing and all that, like, if uh, you know, the less people around me, the better. You know sort of go off my own space and, and uh, do my thing. What do you have when you're on it? Do you have other music going? Do you have the TV on? It does have to be completely silent when you're working on your own. Can you have any distractions? Does it have to be like a white room with not much going on? As far as writing? Uh, I actually kind of... Um, I like to play like cool movies that I like, you know, just like, but play them on uh, on mute, and then sort of write to what I, whatever project I'm writing at the time. And uh, as long as the movie matches the vibe I'm going for, it sort of helps me. But you know, that's my little weird thing, I guess. That's what were the films that you were watching on the last session? <laughs> can, do Actually, I, can I know? Uh, what's funny with uh, Intercession when we? I don't know if I told. You. These guys that are not, but uh, when I was writing Intercession, um, certain like certain times I've watched uh, Minority Report. <laughs> it's kind of kind of a funny one, but but now there's been so many different movies. Like it's not always just like one, and it's like I don't know. yeah. As a band, would you say you're generally on the same page when it comes to writing, or is there like lots of debates going on, or? 
differences of opinion? Um, I think generally we're, we're there. Of course, when it comes to like the little icing on the cake stuff, there's a bit of feuding. Um, but most of the material comes from from us just kind of like getting in a room and working it out. There's not too much of, a, of like a preconceived idea. So that sort of allows everybody to kind of just naturally get their input in there without there being a sort of conflict. Yeah. Is there someone that kind of takes the lead with that sort of stuff and goes, right, what's your idea? What do you think? Is there like a... I don't think so, no. no. I think it's kind of just like a, whatever, whoever has some something, you know, that brought it to the table we all sort of if we like it we'll start to to jam on it and work on it and if not then then we won't yeah. as a man who likes his films how much do you take into consideration visuals production videos artwork all of that sort of stuff is that important huge aspect for us we, we did our music video with this uh this guy named brian butler um, who's an associate of like the underground occult filmmaker Kenneth Anger. We, we dig his films a lot. And, um, you know, guys like Yodorowsky and stuff as well, you know. But uh, Brian helped us kind of like capture visually what we were trying to portray with Intercession. I think that it's sort of like, you know, I mean, it's an important aspect, the music and the art. I think we want to try to combine both mediums to kind of have this like, <laughs> supra musical experience, you know? It's like, not like an opera, but something that just hits all the senses at the same time. Right. Yeah. Okay, now, are you up for some random questions? <laughs> yeah. Are you? Are you going to play fair? Well, uh, you can pick them out of the bum bag. <laughs> okay. you put, there's nothing gross in here, don't worry. Okay. If you put your hand in, there's no slime or anything like that. So pick a question. <laughs> I wish right. I had done that now. Oh, if you, if could, you could live inside a film? Yeah. The Truman Show. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sweet, we done. What would it be? Fear and loathing in Las Vegas. <laughs> what was the question? If you live inside a film. Wow, what a fucking crazy question. Um, inside a film. Um, it's not crazy. Oh, my bad. Uh, Starship Troopers. <laughs> A classic. Yes. I'd go for Edward Scissorhands, I think. I want to look after Edward, make sure he's all right. Is that weird? <laughs> right, one more question, then I'll let you go and have some fun. <laughs> if you could live inside a piece of art, which one and why? Uh, perhaps a nude painting with some lovely lady. Mm, yeah, sure. It's yeah. a good idea. I'll go with that. Well, Stolen mine. Some, some nice curvy Matisse painting or something, you know? A Botticelli. Maybe. Yeah, that'd be nice. I, uh, yeah, I don't have my own. I, I'll go with yours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much for talking to yeah, me. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.